Hello and welcome to Anatomy with Dr. P. In today's lesson, we'll be exploring the histology of the gastrointestinal tract. The first organ we'll be discussing is the esophagus. The esophagus is a muscular tube that passes food from the pharynx down to the stomach. Now, when we look at the esophagus under a microscope, as we're doing here, we can see in the center of the organ this very large, white, irregularly shaped area called the lumen. The lumen is essentially the passageway that food passes through. Now, if we look at the wall of the esophagus, we can see that it's divided into four characteristic layers. And these four layers are going to be present throughout the gastrointestinal tract. So what we're going to do, we're going to zoom in on this part of our organ so we can see those four individual layers a little bit better. So let's zoom in. And when we zoom in, the first layer that we can see is this one here, this inner layer is called the mucosa. The mucosa is the layer that comes into direct contact with the food that's out here in the lumen. And we can see that the mucosa has three distinctive sublayers to it. Now, we're in the esophagus, and the esophagus is relatively close to the opening to the external environment. That means that we want our epithelial lining to be specialized for protection, but because we're inside of the body, we don't have to worry about it drying out. So when we look at the mucosa of the esophagus, we see a layer of non-keratinized stratified squamous. Notice how the cells down at the bottom are relatively cube-shaped, and as we work our way up, they get flatter and flatter and flatter, and there's also no dead cells on top. There's not that keratinization that we see in the skin. Below our epithelial layer, we have this layer of loose connective tissue. This is known as our lamina propria. The lamina propria essentially supports this epithelium. Below the lamina propria, the last layer, which is kind of this grayish pink layer that we see, this is called the muscularis mucosae. The muscularis mucosae is essentially a thin layer of smooth muscle that helps with the passage of material inside of the lumen, and it also helps enhance the interaction between the epithelium and the things that are passing through the lumen. Now, to see our second layer, we're going to zoom back out a little bit. So here's our mucosa. And notice how sitting below the mucosa, we have this layer of kind of hot pink tissue. This layer that sits below the mucosa is called the submucosa. The submucosa contains things like arteries, veins, nerves, and lymphatics. And its job is essentially to support the cells found out in the mucosa. The third layer, if we zoom even further out, so here's our mucosa, here's the submucosa, this third layer out here is called the muscularis externa. Now, since this specimen is from the middle third of the esophagus, it contains both smooth and skeletal muscle fibers in its muscularis externa. That's because the esophagus is the area where we're transitioning between swallowing and peristalsis. Now, when we look at the muscularis externa, one thing we want to note is that the inner layer of muscle is circular, so it kind of looks like it's going around the esophagus, and the outer layer is more longitudinal. Now, around the outside of the esophagus, our last and outermost layer would be called an adventitia. It's not present on this slide. Essentially, an adventitia is just fibrous connective tissue that helps blend in and support the esophagus. So it blends into the surrounding tissue and essentially anchors it in place. The next organ we'll be discussing is the small intestine. The small intestine is a muscular tube where most of the absorption of nutrients and minerals takes place. Now, like the esophagus, when we look at the center of the organ, we can see a very large, white, empty space called the lumen. This is going to be where food is passing through our small intestine. 
if I look at the wall of the small intestine, I can see the same four characteristic layers. Now, on this particular slide, we're looking at the ileum, the very last region of our small intestine. We're going to focus in on the wall down in this area so that we can see those distinctive layers. Now, as we zoom in, we're going to first take a look at the mucosa. Now, remember, the mucosa is the innermost layer of the gastrointestinal tract, and it's essentially the layer that comes in contact with the food. And here we can see some key differences between the esophagus and the small intestine. While the esophagus had a very thick layer of non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium for protection, the mucosa of the small intestine features a layer of simple columnar epithelium with all of these goblet cells present. Notice how the goblet cells, they kind of look like bluish gray balloons on this particular slide. Now, the reason for this difference is that the small intestine is specialized for nutrient absorption. So we need an epithelium that can do that function. Now, if we zoom out from the epithelium a little bit, notice how our mucosa is folded into these finger-like projections. Those finger-like projections are called intestinal villi. And their purpose is essentially to increase the surface area that lines the lumen because if we have more surface area, we can do more absorption. Below our mucosa, the second layer is called the submucosa. And just like in the esophagus, the submucosa is made up of connective tissue and contains things like arteries, veins, nerves, and lymphatics. The third layer, as we move outwards, is the muscularis externa. Now, since this specimen is from the ileum of the small intestine, it's going to contain an inner circular layer. If you notice, these muscle cells are running around in a circular pattern of smooth muscle and an outer longitudinal layer of smooth muscle. So all of the muscle fibers we have here are smooth because at this point, we're only doing peristalsis. Now, the outermost layer, which isn't shown on this particular specimen, would be the serosa. The serosa is essentially a layer of epithelium that overlies a layer of loose connective tissue. And we find serosas on the gastrointestinal tract organs that are located down in the abdomen. 